Mana, what do you think his plan is for game number two on Daybreak? Is it another passive game we can look yeah, at? Yeah, I don't think it should be anything different. The main reason for that is Mana loves his end game stage. He thinks his army control is the best over there. He likes to just play games straight up. He thinks he can roll with the best of them, and he absolutely can. The problem is Sen just completely, completely dominated his opponent. Yeah. I mean, that was like a no contest game. It was a great read, too, because um, even if Mana kept making you know Stargate units and whatnot, he had a really good composition, a mixture of Rotus and Hydras. And, of course, he was prepared in position. Like, if he saw a lot of Phoenixes and whatnot, he probably would have not tried to engage directly onto the overloads. He kept the army separate. So many times, Zerg's load up, like, right outside their natural and traversed, like, the entire map. But uh, Sen really had everything planned out and just made sure to keep the units at bay. And it really shows you just how precise Sen is. His actions are very, very deliberate. And just the way he moves around with his army, it's pretty clever. I, I, I really liked how he showed the Hydras and the Roaches in front. Yeah, and then bait no, the units exactly, out. Exactly, and yeah. bait the units out. Because Sen was like, hey, I want to fight right now. Uh, look at this, hatchery first. Huh. Uh, hatchery first from our Red Zerg. He went for 14 hatch. It wasn't a 15 hatch. That's why it looked like it was a spawning pool, but of course Mana, he's going to spot this out. Now, Mana went for a Nexus first, or he's going for a Nexus yeah, first, rather. because he scouted no gas. Oh, he's trying to fake a cannon placement. <laughs> he has no ability to make a cannon whatsoever. And uh, Sen, he's like, oh, I'm just going to send two. He's like, oh, you're such a cute probe. You see the drone squeezing the pinch, or pinching the cheeks of the probe. He's like, <laughs> oh, you're so cute. But yeah, I mean, Mana at this point really has no options for aggression. Mana, of course, pretty greedy as well. He's a greedy Protoss, just trying to play passive. Now, Daybreak, an interesting map to try to grab your third, because we've been seeing lots of uh, Zergs just bust Protosses at that third, no matter what they try to do. <laughs> yeah. Especially we see Stefano play ZVP. But we also seen some interesting styles. We saw, uh, we saw TLO go for like a huge speed lane kind of style too on Daybreak. So, what are your thoughts about this going into PVZ mid game? I think it's dependent on the Protoss. If the Zerg senses that there is some sort of weakness, then they're able to capitalize. But normally, I mean, Mana is off to a great start. He has the, the Nexus Hurst. Even though his opponent has that extra hatchery, he's able to double queen very fast. I feel like just the order in which Mana has gone, it really enables him to keep up against that never-ending onslaught of Roaches and Zerglings. So if Mana plays this right, he will be able to get the Immortal count up. He will be able to get the Sentry count as well and defending against everything pretty accurately. So I think Mena is in a great spot. It just depends. Sen is going to make that, that call based on his scouting, his overlord scouting. Mm -hmm. And if he sees an opening, I would say he's going to pull that trigger. He is a player that's known to pull the trigger multiple times. So um, time will tell, Froden. Time will tell. So would you say it's a chrono trigger? Oh, oh yeah. It is a chrono trigger. I, I I wish I had a pair of sunglasses for that. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh, oh man, um, that hurts so much. What? Oh We're my talking God. about the only thing worse than getting your army out of position was a Zerling run by one. Speaking of which, Mana leaves a huge open, no cannon, as we were talking about how Mana play is greedy. And there's no, very few things greedier than no cannon, especially if you go Nexus first. Mana is going to have his Zealot completely surrounded. And regardless of what happened, that Zealot is toast. Oh, and wow. this pylon is going to drop, deactivating a lot of things. And there goes all the upgrades, the plus one attack, the, yeah, the warp, warp gate. gate. All the timings that were supposed to be relevant for mana are gone. Oh, my god. He goodness. has no potential to do any sort of early game harassment. Look at this. The Zerglings all were in one uh, strike away from dying, and Sen's been able to keep it alive now. Uh, Sen, he told me when he's in this kind of position, he actually just uh, completely goes into beast mode because, he, like, Sen is a player that's based on confidence. Uh, he tells me that he like he loves loves having confidence and he plays at his best when he knows everything what his opponent's doing. And now that he has full scout, you can put your money on the fact that mana is uh, whatever he tries to do is not going to work. Yeah, because right now, mana mana's build is shown. Yeah. Sen knows exactly what his opponent is capable of. Even if it's nothing that he sees here, he's saying, well, I know you can't do mass gateways, right? Because I can see everything. Well, I, I, I should say he can do mass gateways, but Sen will be able to spot that out very easily. As long as he keeps that zergling alive. Nope. I would actually told him to go down here and check out this area, mm. but look at that. 
gateways are going to be placed. This yeah. is late. You can Super see. Super late. Warp gate is just 40 seconds away. Um, and gateways, let's go and check it. It takes 65 seconds to make a single gateway. And he's going for five. Oops. Oh. Five gates and a twilight council. So this is a really unconventional build. Usually it's either four gate with some pressure on the third. Um, or you tech up to Robo, or you go straight to Twilight Council. And yeah, I mean, this all comes down to the fact that Mana had to hide a lot of what he was doing with the Zergling in his base. Obviously, if you show the Twilight Council, it's just way too much information. Sen also has a... I mean, it's also interesting place because it's straight... It's, like, very accessible for any Overlord to kind of get sight of it yeah. as well. Um, normally, they tuck it behind their natural, you know, like a little bit between the, between the natural ramp and the main, so... Well, I'm just, I'm just, gonna, I'm interested. I'm curious to see what Mana's gonna do. Now Mana has his pylon going up, and Sen already knows about oh. it. And Mana knows that Sen knows about it. So I feel like this Zealot warping over here yeah. is kind of misguided. I don't think this is too effective. But look at that Dark Shrine. Yeah, Dark Shrine setting up a small little choke, and Mana, of course, trying to pressure and keep Sen away from that Dark Shrine, but Sen knows, and of course the idea is Sen's actually completely, ooh! I was gonna say he's All completely right. okay with that, but if he lost that queen, that would have been worse than it actually should have been. Now the Dark Shrine is definitely a way to get back into the game, seeing as he's had a pretty tough uh, loss in this beginning stage. Blink is actually being upgraded plus two, so it won't be some, oh, well, he has plenty of gas to spare, of course, because that beginning stage, that makes sense, never mind. But the question is, can he get pylons in positioning? Probably not. Sen will be able to remove all the pylons close to his base. He has good coverage all around the place with overlords and different sorts of units. But here we go. A small little engagement will start to happen right here. Uh, Zealous just trying to just protect the pylon. Mana knows without that pylon, the aggression of DTs get cut by a huge amount. I would say like 60% because that's how much of the map that he covers just with that pylon. Yeah. And so Sen... He knows something's fishy. He says, well, okay, you've shown only Zealots and, like, five Stalkers. Something weird's got to be happening. So sends, he's make, he's getting oh burrowed. Oh, my God. He has an Overseer? How does he actually know about this? This oh, is wow. crazy insight from <laughs> Sen because he hasn't actually seen any form of, of, like, any indication that it is Dark Templars. The yeah. second, or the third and fourth gas have just been taken from from uh, mana. And normally when you delay your gas for so long, you don't expect something like Dark Temple. Like, look at this, Spore mm. Crawler goes down. Yeah. But uh, Sen Templars. knows. Yeah, of course he and knows. Yeah. I mean, like, so, so he's completely uh, aware of what he needs to do. He just needs to make sure not to lose too many drones. Uh, it's besides Dark Templar, if you're kind of careless, they can take down worker lines very quickly. And you see that <clears throat> Sen, he's just playing very, very calm. Very calm, not trying to scramble everywhere. You can see that mana, he's targeting down the lair, but not really able to do much. As you can see that during this whole time, Sen's gearing up for a counterattack, and he knows there's no third as yeah. well. So that's a huge indication that Sen is very far ahead. And at this point, Sen, he's looking unstoppable. Let's go ahead and look at the income tab, 62 harvesters to 51. So he will need to drone up a little bit, but upgrades go to him. Actually, upgrades don't go to him. 2-0 is just about to kick in for mana. And look at this. Stalker is going directly over. Up, <laughs> oh, picked you off. And uh, yeah, actually, that's interesting. I a burrowed unit doesn't take the watchtower, so, so uh, mana thought it was completely safe. But a cloaked unit does. What is the world coming to? That is, that's actually really interesting. Huh. So Zerg has no way to ever, well, he, a changeling oh. can also take the tower too, and Sen has a couple of changelings. Uh, that are actually having a lone time in the corner. A nice little romantic one's day a zealot, on day One's for. still a, an amorphous blob. <laughs> <laughs> this holy, this fusion should never happen. Oh, the stalkers are trying oh, to. Oh, I thought engage. he was trying to bait, like, <laughs> like, yeah. oh yeah, come, come to me, come to me, and then all of a sudden, poof, and he has all of his roaches that. directly Aww. underneath. But this will be non-stop aggression. Yeah. And uh, Sen is just getting able to pump out units nonstop. Mana doesn't even have a hundred supply to deal with it. This is absolutely insane. Sen is pretty much maxed uh, at the 13 half minute mark and just completely able to dominate. The Zerglings don't even really need to. As you can see, the Zerglings won again on the action, and the Big Brother Roaches are like, no, we got this, no. bro. <laughs> and backed into a corner, you don't really have the ability to blink that wow, well. GG. GG. <laughs> Sen takes game number two in a very convincing fashion, able to read his opponent. As uh, Mana played with his hand open, that's what happens with you just letting Zerglings run by and playing too greedy. Yeah, so very well played by Sen. 
able to obviously <laughs> take out that pylon mm -hmm. and then win the game. No, uh, obviously have the take foresight. Take a huge lead. Yeah, take yeah. a huge lead. Have the foresight to defend against our Templars, even though you see no third and fourth gas. Normally, when it is third and fourth gas, uh, you will suspect something like that because there's, you know, it costs a lot to get dark trines. It costs a lot to get dark Templars. So uh, you then transition into uh, something that is a little bit more gas intensive, whether it be Colossus, Stalkers, etc. But he didn't do that. Um, no. He still yeah. made the Overseer, and he looked really, really good. Yeah. Uh, just shows you how safe he is when he knows he's ahead. Yeah, like he scouted no third for a long time. He's again, he was. I saw it. Like he was. He scouted five zealots and like three stalkers at the time. He's like, well, he has a huge gas pool for something. So he made spores, overseers, just to be uh, very comprehensive in his approach. Great job yeah. by Sam.